Welcome back to the channel. Join us on a day in Skein, Denmark for everything we saw, ate, and did in this beautiful coastal town. Day 7 of our 11-night Disney cruise through Northern Europe began on a beautiful sunny day in Denmark as we arrived in Skein. This seaside town is known for its very charming yellow buildings, miles of beaches, and loads of nature. As we disembarked the Disney Dream, we found there to be a complimentary shuttle to take us into town. It's about a 15 minute bus ride from the port to the middle of town, so it's very easy to get to, and you don't have to worry about arranging transportation beforehand. bus dropped us off right in town, across from the bike shop where we planned to rent bikes for the day. Skane is very easy to get around by bike, and it's recommended to either rent a bike or a car if you want to see all of the sights in the area, as some of them are kind of far apart from each other. We made our way outside of town to the bike path that takes you to Grenen, which is the northernmost point of Denmark, and also where you can see the Baltic and the North Seas meet. The bike ride there is mostly flat, making an enjoyable 20 to 30 minute ride to the beach. And as you can see, there is a designated bike lane here, so you don't have to worry about sharing the road with other vehicles. The path takes you directly to the parking lot, and from there, you'll find the beach access. You can find the Grenon Welcome Center right at the front in the car lot. There are lots of trails that you can walk or even ride bikes on, and these are easily accessible from the parking lot. This beach is huge, and if you plan to walk from the parking lot to the sandbar where the two seas meet, you'll want to allow plenty of time. You can walk along the water, but going in the water is strictly prohibited as the currents can be very strong and unpredictable. You'll also find a couple German bunkers here, which is pretty interesting. The Skane Bunker Museum, which is an old German bunker, also has some war artifacts inside, so if that's something that you're interested in seeing, you can definitely head there while you're over here. As you walk out to the point where the two seas meet, you can actually see water on either side of you, and it's really cool to be able to see how the two seas are going in opposite directions towards the sand. If you are interested in experiencing this, you're gonna wanna check the tides for the day to see the best time to see it. We went around 10.30 in the morning, and the timing was perfect. Watching the waves from the two seas crash into each other was such an awesome experience. Definitely recommend if you happen to be in this area. It is totally worth the trek. So, so cool. Just be aware that lines can get a little bit long to get pictures or photos, as most people come here literally just for this. So keep it in mind, give yourself plenty of time so you can enjoy it all and get pictures and videos of whatever you want. We 
we enjoyed a little more time at the beach before heading to our next destination. Walk through some of the trails. You can actually see the gray lighthouse from here, which we passed on the way over. And just enjoy all of the nature. This is also a great place to see wildlife. Just don't get too close if you do see any. We didn't see any. We were also there on a day when the cruise ship was in town, obviously. If you are not up for the trek to and from the beach, because it can be a long one, there is a shuttle called the Sanderman that can take you from the parking lot to the point where the two seas meet. You can catch it right in the parking lot. It is 35 Danish kroner for adults and 15 for kids under 12. They only take cash at the wagon. So if you have a credit card, there is somewhere else that you can go pay. There are also restrooms and some snacks at the visitor center here. We headed back to the bike trail and stopped to see a couple of the lighthouses, the gray lighthouse, which I mentioned before, a few other points of interest along the way. Next on our list, we were headed to the Sandbury Church, which is about a 30-minute bike ride from Grenin. And you do have to go through town to get to this. So we bike through town, past all of the charming yellow houses. This town is just so pretty. And it just reminds me of like a little fairy tale. Once we got to the other side of town, we found our way back to the bike path. This is pretty clearly marked, so it's pretty easy to find if you are riding a bike. This path is a little bit more intense than the path that we took to get to Grenin. First of all, because it's a gravel path, but it's also a lot more hilly. Not only uphill, but also downhill, so just be aware of that. A lot of people were also walking this, so if you prefer to walk and you didn't rent a bike, you can also walk this path as well. I believe it's about an hour walk from town. A lot of it is shaded, and it's still a very enjoyable bike ride if you like spending some time in nature. This is the Sandbury Church. This church is believed to have been built in the late 14th century and is actually surrounded by sand dunes. It was the largest church in the area at the time, and around 1795, the church was closed because the drifting sand started to block the road leading to it. The church tower is now all that remains of the original structure. There's a bit of mystery that surrounds the church's history, but there are stories of the doors being blocked by the sand on Sundays and the need to evacuate the church during service, and it became increasingly difficult to keep it open, so unfortunately, they had to close it. And this is the church tower. It's all that remains of the original structure. They demolished the bottom half, so it's not actually buried in sand, just the church tower remains. When you initially walk inside, there is a small bit of information on this first floor here that you can read a little bit about the church. And then you can go upstairs. And I just have to say, this is kind of terrifying. Um, the stairs are super narrow. There are no railings. The steps are so narrow that actually my shoes couldn't even fit on them. I had to kind of walk up sideways. 
And instead of railings, there is a rope that you can hang on to as you ascend the steps. <laughs> we found it really helpful to call up or down whenever we wanted to use the stairs to make sure no one else was on the stairs at the same time. Because if someone else was on the stairs at the same time, there's no way both people would fit. So someone would have to back up and go back down or go back up. We noticed families with smaller children having the most difficulty navigating the steps. So if you plan to take your kids up, just be sure to have a plan to get them down because it was a struggle. They're just really narrow. They're very, very steep. And like I said, there are no railings. Once you are all the way up, the area is kind of unfinished. It's almost like an attic. There are some little windows you can look out. As you can see, we can see the Disney Dream from there. So the view is very pretty. You can see all of the trails kind of surrounding the area that go through the sand dunes as well. Very cool. The history around it is really interesting. Just, yeah, if you're going to go up and down those stairs, make sure you're really careful. Not for the faint of heart. <laughs> After all of that exploring, we decided we needed to get some lunch, so we headed to town. This video was taken on the way out, but you can kind of see how it's marked with the church. If you are riding your bike or walking, makes it very clear how to get there. Most of the roads that you're going to take to get between the town center and the Sandbury Church are through neighborhoods, so just be aware of that, that it's not going to be like a bike path like I had shown earlier, but actually you'll be going through town to get from one area to the other. We ended up at Pina Skogrillen for a casual and very budget-friendly lunch. Denmark is pretty expensive, so something to keep in mind if you plan on eating anywhere around here. It is kind of pricey. This place was very budget-friendly, and everyone was so nice. The employee working here actually taught me a few words in Danish, so I was very appreciative of that. We grabbed some soda and water. It started to get very hot, so definitely needed some water. It got some fries and a Danish hot dog, which I believe is called a rod hot dog. I don't know if I said that right, but I definitely tried. This comes with pickles, raw onions, fried onions, and a Danish room a lot. I think there might have been mayonnaise also on it. Um, whatever was on it was very, very good. I don't even really eat hot dogs, but I wanted to try it because I was told that I should, and I thought it was delicious. After we ate, we headed to the town square. A lot of this area is a pedestrian area, so it's very easy to walk around. We just parked our bikes in the bike parking area, and we walked and checked out all of the shops and grabbed some ice cream for dessert. There are a lot of shops here with souvenirs and novelty items, along with things like clothing. There are also quite a few restaurants here as well. If you're looking for lunch, if you're looking for a snack, if you're looking for drinks, there's a bunch of that stuff right here, super easy to get to. We explored more of the area after our ice cream, and of course we had to find a magnet for our stateroom door to add to our collection, so we were on the hunt for that. We 
And then shortly after that, we returned our bikes and headed slightly outside of town to find a bakery for an afternoon snack. And then we just took some time to walk around and really enjoy the charming architecture of this delightful town. It was then time to head back to the ship, so we caught the complimentary shuttle back to the port. It just meets at the same place that it dropped us off, right across from the bike shop. And then when we got back to the dream, we saw Donald was meeting. So, of course, we had to stop and say hello. I do not like clowns, but I think that Donald can pull that outfit off, if anyone can. It had been such a busy day and we had biked and walked so much that we decided we wanted to watch the ship sail away from the Rainforest Room sauna. This was such a good choice. It was so nice to be able to enjoy the sauna after all of that bike riding and walking. And there was just a variety show playing this night, so we decided to instead just enjoy some time on our veranda and relax as the sun started to set on this beautiful day. Dinner was at Royal Palace, and since it was a little bit of a longer cruise, we had a little bit of a different menu than usual. So our server brought us out lots of things for us to try. We started off with the artichoke and spinach dip and the bruschetta, both of which were very good. And then he brought us out both of the soups, uh, red lentil and tomato. Again, both were very good. I think we agreed that we liked maybe the red lentil a little bit better. It's a red lentil and coconut, which is an interesting combination, but it was very good. For the main, I got the center cut beef tenderloin in lobster, which was delicious. And my daughter got the lemon and lime roasted half chicken. This was surprisingly good. Sometimes the chicken on Disney Cruise I found to be like kind of dry and almost like a little flavorless, but this was a really good chicken. Surprisingly tender, the flavor was great. For our desserts, our server brought us out the Rocky Mountain Sunday, which he said was his favorite the triple chocolate tureen and light lemon cake. We all decided that the sundae was actually the best one, but they were all very good. We returned to our room to find a towel bat hanging from our ceiling, which was really unique. I don't think I've ever seen this towel friend in our stateroom before, so that was very fun, very cute. And that was how we ended day seven on our Disney cruise through Northern Europe with a day in Skane, Denmark. I hope you have enjoyed this video and know what to expect if you are headed to this charming city. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.